Huh? What's this? I guess some sort of a holiday. Ah, never mind. That's not what I want. What I want to know is what is the weirdest animal on the planet? Tell me, Google. Huh? What is this? These are not weirdest animals. They're just strange looking. Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. And today we're going to discuss the truly weirdest animal we've ever discovered. Because according to the recent genomic analysis of this particular animal, it makes it the most unique, most strange animal we've ever discovered. Let's talk about Tuatara, also known as Rhynchocephalia, and welcome to What the Math. Okay, don't click away yet. This is not a reptile. This is not just some lizard somewhere in the world. This is truly the strangest animal we've ever discovered, because it seems to be a little bit of mammal, a little bit of reptile, but also a little bit of bird. It's basically a mixture of a lot of things together. And yes, these creatures do resemble lizards, and to some extent they even used to perform similar duties to lizards millions and millions of years ago. But eventually the real lizards took their place and the so-called Tuataras remain the only survivors of their own species. The species that we can only refer to by its scientific name, Rhynchocephalia, simply because there is really no one else left to classify under this name. And the reason this species suddenly became the strangest on the planet is because of this recent study that you can find in Nature magazine that identified and analyzed the genome of Tuataras and discovered that they possess some of the strangest and really never before seen genome on the planet. But let's talk about the weird part of this animal. It can easily withstand super cold temperatures. It can actually survive for many, many years by practically being frozen in ice which is something that no other lizard on the planet can do. At the same time, they cannot eat for up to 6 months. They can live pretty much as long as a typical human being, up to about 100 years old. They can easily hold their breath for up to an hour. And interestingly, they also seem to possess a third eye on their forehead, which unfortunately is not really that easily visible because as they grow and as they mature, the eye gets covered by scales but that eye can perceive light, and today we have no idea what it's used for. So it's a three-eyed, strange, unusual, very peculiar creature that also, according to the recent paper, seems to possess the DNA of mammals, which are of course things like us and things like these beautiful horses, for example. They also possess DNA from reptiles, which is, I guess, not surprising because they do seem to share similar visual features. and. They even seem to possess DNA from these unusual creatures known as platypuses. And a typical platypus is already a pretty strange creature. So there's a lot of a mixture inside of their DNA, and this mixture currently makes absolutely no sense. Oh wait, I forgot one. They also have a little bit of bird in them too. So yeah, these are really strange creatures. But why is it that most of us have probably never heard of this? Well, the reason is because they only seem to live in one single area on the planet. You can only pretty much find them in very highly protected areas in New Zealand, and they're protected by the Maori people of New Zealand who refer to them as Taonga, which means my special treasure. Which is super interesting because for this particular research, the scientists had to collaborate with the in indigenous communities and to be exceptionally respectful toward the animals they were studying. So this was a pretty interesting collaboration between scientists and indigenous communities. But in order for us to try to understand where all of this strangeness of these animals comes from, we have to go back in time. We have to go back to Earth approximately 250 to 216 million years ago even before the first dinosaurs walked on the planet. Before the dinosaurs evolved, there was another evolution happening. The evolution that happened a few million years before the dinosaurs, which resulted in this species right here known as Rhynchocephalia, which eventually evolved into something known as Phenodons, which are essentially Tuataras. And before reptiles became widespread, and before they occupied all of the niches they have today, all of these jobs were done by Rhynchocephalias, who eventually got outcompeted by all of the different types of reptiles. And the reason why they got outcompeted, and also the reason they still exist today as well, is once again related to their DNA. For some unknown reason, and this is something we don't really understand truly yet, their evolution process and also their DNA 
uh, changes or evolves really, really slowly compared to anything else on the planet. For this reason, we usually refer to these types of creatures as the living fossils. Another good example is right here. This is the very old, approximately 170 million years old fossil of ginkgo tree, which actually remarkably has not changed almost at all in the 170 million uh, years since. But of all of the other ancient fossils, including these horseshoe crabs that you can sometimes find in certain lakes, Tuataras indeed possess one of the strangest DNAs we've ever seen. For some peculiar reasons, their DNA does possess the same sequences as mammals, as birds, as reptiles, and even as platypuses. And that just doesn't make sense to us right now. No other creature seems to have that on the planet. At the same time, their DNA is really, really large. It's about 50% larger than the human DNA, and our DNA is already pretty big. So whatever is happening inside these creatures is now a very, very big biological mystery that we're going to probably spend the next few years trying to answer. But because this is also the last surviving member of their whole family, it's sort of very important for us to try to preserve these animals if we want to understand what they're all about and, of course, how they could be related to other life on the planet as well. For example, approximately 10 years ago, this study right here discovered that the temperature plays a really big role in determining the sex of these animals. For example, warming conditions, which has been happening in New Zealand as well, will lead to more and more males and not as many females. Which of course might lead to the decrease in reproduction of these animals. Although, obviously they've survived for millions of years, so they must have done something to prevent that from happening. And seeing how they adapt to the warming conditions will be really important for us to understand for, I guess, other animals' survival as well. At the same time, their DNA seems to possess quite a lot of repeated segments, and a lot of it is also jumping genes, and it seems to even be more so than some of the other animals we've studied. So trying to understand how their genome evolved and how it protected the animal for millions and millions of years is going to be really important for, I guess, understanding the genome in general, but also for helping us understand ourselves. But also because these little three-eyed creatures managed to outlive most of the animals on the planet, including the dinosaurs, it's really important for us to understand how these animals adapt to everything on the planet. You know, in the last 250 million years, the planet experienced both some of the coldest and also some of the hottest conditions our planet has ever seen. And during those periods, only some animals prevailed. Very, very few, as a matter of fact. So trying to figure out how these unusual creatures did it is really important for the future of everyone else on the planet. But I was also very curious to see if I could find some other siblings, in this case extinct siblings, of Tuataras and what they may have looked like. As you can probably imagine, a lot of them did resemble modern lizards, although in most cases they had a lot of different physical features that lizards today don't have. Like for example, they all have two sets of teeth, they have double teeth in the upper jaw. Their jaws are also a little bit different, but overall the appearance is very lizard-like. But then I discovered that many of these creatures also lived underwater and were very successful ocean-dwelling rhynchocephalia that were eventually replaced by other species like sharks, for example. So these creatures were pretty much everywhere and they were in every single niche, but eventually were replaced by more successful creatures like modern lizards. And so even though according to Google these are the weirdest creatures on the planet, today we have another contender for number one spot. The incredible Tuatara from New Zealand, which will probably create a lot of buzz once we discover what's going on with its DNA. But until we learn more, check out the paper in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and maybe share this with someone who loves learning about science and space. Also, I'll make sure to follow this up in some of the future videos with some of the future discoveries about this animal. So maybe click that notification bell because it's going to notify you when the video comes out. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.
Okay, apparently they also have cat-like eyes, and I see that. But where's the third eye? Is it that bump right here? Huh. 